the story because it's, it's something that I, uh, I I still remember very very vividly. Whenever I would when I would be witnessing the the rehearsals and every time the cello section would have a significant passage of solo playing, every time the cellos would start sounding, my mouth would begin to water. <laughs> it was sort of a Pavlovian effect that the cello had, uh, or that I had, towards the sound of the instrument. And uh, I think the cello chose me. symphony so I used to hear a lot of instruments and I started really young mostly because I, I just I knew I wanted to play something My parents never insisted I choose anything but you know they would they said Jenny what would you like to play and I remember hearing the violin it was just ugh, ouch it hurt my ears you know. and uh, <laughs> they're gonna kill me and uh, and the cello was just too big and bass, my mom played it, I need something unique. And the, the violists in the orchestra were the nicest people. I could ride in their cases, you know, I was little, and they were so nice to me. And the instrument sounded the most like the human voice. It sounded like my mom's voice speaking to me. So when I was young, I said, I, I want to play that, viola. They're nice people, and it's all history. <laughs> four years old so it's kind of hard to remember so I really have just what my parents say to go off of <laughs> and at that time we lived um, in Highland Park outside of Chicago very close to uh, Ravinia Park where the Chicago Symphony would play in the summer and uh, my parents would took us to some of those concerts where we sat on, out on the lawn and watched the Chicago Symphony and my mom says after one of those concerts I said I want to play that one it goes like this and uh, got started in Suzuki soon after that, and <laughs> I've never looked back. When I was five, uh, I was listening to one of those old records from uh, Chamber Orchestra with pieces of Haydn, Rossini, Boccherini, and I started crying and I asked my parents, to play the violin, which didn't happen until three years later. Uh, the Harrington Quartet is unique uh, in many ways, I think. Uh, we're, uh, first of all, our, our benefactor, Mrs. Harrington, uh, created this group for us. It wasn't created um, in a conservatory or anything like that. It was, it was created for us to, uh, to benefit this this community, and uh, so uh, we uh, play not only in the string quartet but also in the Amarillo Symphony. What kind of car do I drive? I drive a, a Honda Odyssey. <laughs> Yaris, Toyota Yaris, gray. I drive a Toyota Camry. <laughs> Ooh, I drive a Toyota Rav4. White, and her name is Lois. 
Musically, I think there were several. Uh, it's hard to say which, who, would have been the biggest one. Uh, of course, I always remember my teacher, Aldo Periso. Um, he's still teaching at Yale after 50 years uh, in the same position at the music at the music school, Yale University. Uh, he has created several generations of cellists. They're all over the world uh, exercising their craft as either soloists, chamber musicians, teachers, orchestral performers, and so forth. Uh, he was almost like my second father. And um, really, he molded me into the person that I may be today. Uh, and I hold him in such high esteem, his contribution to uh, the cello world has been significant. Okay, good. Could we try just for, yeah, two, two, twelve. That's the one that actually, I'm, actually that's hard for me for some reason. Uh, um, it's a pretty easy one. It's my mother. Um, uh, my mother's a classical, classically trained bass player and is an African American woman and um, grew up in a time when African American girls did not play classical music. And uh, she went on to some incredible, uh, an incredible career, and um, despite all that was against her, and I find that to be so inspiring to me as an African American musician, female musician myself. Um, she, she's played with so many artists and fine artists, and grew up in New York, you know, where she'd take the subway, she'd take her bass on the subway, and uh, you know, they'd go up to her and they'd say. So, so gal, you play, you play jazz, you play blues, and she'd say, no, what, what do you play? I play Mozart, and they look, Mozart, you know, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> but she went on to do great things, and, you know, I just think it's inspiring.
to grow, to interact with other people, and uh, to make music with other people that becomes uh, more than the sum of each of one of us individually. <laughs> It's very intimate, sincere, and all of us are in a communication. Every one of us have an individual voice and are hearing to each other, expressing themselves and also sometimes singing together. Thank you very much for, for coming. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right?